Good evening. You're watching the main news on HK IBC. I'm Sarah Wong. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Government advisors suggest that people who have recovered from COVID did not receive a third vaccine dose. China reports nearly 2,000 COVID cases as the latest outbreak worsens. And some Ukrainian refugees decide to return home despite intensifying attacks from Russian troops. People who have recovered from COVID do not need to sign up for a third jab, according to health experts advising the government. This comes as Hong Kong reported another 32,000 infections. Macy Mock reports. If there are any benefits to catching COVID, it is that recovered patients are now likely to be exempt from a third vaccine dose. That is the latest suggestion made by two scientific committees under the Center for Health Protection. People who have received two shots of either BioNTech or Sinovac do not need a booster jab upon recovery. Immunocompromised individuals, however, still need to sign up for a third jab after three months. If someone has been infected, according to the experts, based on the scientific data, the infection can be regarded as the same as one shot because the infection itself would generate some immunity in the body. So if uh, someone has not been vaccinated before the infection, uh, one can have uh, one or two shots depending on the age brackets. If uh, before infection, if one has uh, had two shots, uh, then there is no need for a third uh, jab. While an exact implementation date was not specified, Ao said in the meantime, people should simply sign up for jabs according to their age brackets. Ao also dismissed the need for healthy people to find out if they are fit for a third dose by assessing their antibody levels. The scientific committees also recommended children aged 3 to 11 to get a third jab three months after a second Sinovac shot. The announcement came as Hong Kong reported additional 32,430 cases, including 19,095 from rapid antigen tests and 13,335 from PCR tests. There were also 264 COVID-related deaths, including a backlog of 74. The youngest fatality in the past day was a 39-year-old man who required assisted care. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. The government estimates that over 300,000 COVID patients and close contacts are confined at home. The chief executive pledged to step up support for those serving home quarantine with more medicine and hotlines at their disposal. Here's Macy Mock again. For the first time, the government tried to paint a picture on the exact number of people affected by COVID. The chief executive estimated over 300,000 COVID patients and close contacts are serving home quarantine. But Carrie Lam said the figure may be exaggerated, as some may have seen their isolation orders reduced under a recent policy adjustment. Regardless, authorities will step up efforts to support those under home quarantine. From today, paracetamol and pulse oximeters will be included in anti-epidemic kits distributed to certain households. Uh, at the beginning, uh, it would be very difficult to catch up. But I think a few days ago, they managed to catch up by distributing 60,000 uh, bags in a day. Yeah. But of course, if today's volume again is a very big volume, then uh, I cannot guarantee that we'll be able to do it within the 24 hours uh, that uh, we want to do. Acting Home Affairs Chief Jack Chan revealed a fourth call center will be set up to assist people isolating at home, bringing the number of stay home safe hotlines to 550. The hospital authority is also launching six more designated clinics next week, on top of 17 already in operation. 
Meanwhile, Lam confirmed that visiting mainland health expert Liang Wannian has returned to Beijing yesterday. The head of the National Health Commission's COVID task force had been in town since late last month. The Hong Kong leader insisted the central government is not withdrawing its personnel amid a fresh outbreak across the border. At the moment, it has no impact whatsoever on Hong Kong's anti-epidemic work. Uh, it also has no impact whatsoever on uh, the supply of uh, materials and uh, assistance to Hong Kong. Uh, only... Maisie Mock, HKIBC. China has reported nearly 2,000 COVID infections, with the bulk coming from the northeastern province of Jilin, although there were no extra deaths. For the first time, the central government is allowing residents to conduct rapid tests at home. Chloe Feng reports. After relatively stable times during the Winter Olympics, mainland authorities are now scrambling to tackle its most severe COVID outbreak in over two years. There were 1,807 locally acquired infections yesterday, among which 1,412 were from the epicenter of Jilin. The northeastern province bordering North Korea saw cases grow exponentially with 30-fold jump in just a week. The latest head to roll is Jilin Mayor Wang Lu, who was sacked for the city's botched COVID response. A local university chief was also dismissed for negligence after he failed to intervene when positive cases were detected on campus. He allegedly ordered students to stay in libraries, causing more cross-infections. With Jilin under lockdown, its capital Changchun is now building a makeshift hospital with a capacity of 1,500 patients. Elsewhere in China, Guangdong recorded about 60 cases, while Shandong saw daily infections rebound to 175. Although Shanghai only registered six additional cases, the city will halt all public transport terminals starting tomorrow after a spike in asymptomatic cases. The fresh wave of infections has posed an unprecedented challenge to Beijing's zero-COVID policy. For the first time, the state council is allowing residents to conduct self-testing at home, a notable concession to previous testing exercises performed by medical workers. Vice Premier Sun Chun Lan, the point woman on the nation's anti-pandemic work, also encouraged early detection by utilizing rapid antigen test kits. Chloe Fong, HKIBC. Back in Hong Kong, the financial chief has shot down the idea of using public money to help businesses pay rent, saying there are far more people in need of assistance. Pa Chen also predicted negative growth for the first quarter of the year as COVID wreaked havoc on the SAR economy. Here's Chloe Feng again. On his official blog, financial chief Po Chen warned that it was very likely Hong Kong will return to recession for the quarter ending March the 31st. If his predictions are on point, that would end a four-quarter streak of positive growth. Chen also expected the unemployment rate to significantly rebound. He was, however, confident that as soon as the epidemic is under control, the city will soon regain its growth momentum. But before that happens, authorities have proposed a raft of measures to alleviate people's burden. One of them is a proposed law which will allow tens of thousands of businesses to be in arrears for three months. That drew the ire of landlords, who in turn suggest the government subsidize rents for struggling tenants. But Chen shot down the bold idea. Would the whole society accept using public funds in this way, when many grassroots residents are also facing tremendous pressure on expenses? He asked. Pointing to another round of consumption vouchers and government-backed personal loans, Chen said there are already relief measures from his latest budget. 
on a separate note. The financial secretary reassured that the city's banking system remains stable in face of geopolitical uncertainties. The capital adequacy ratio, which is a measure of a bank's capital base to its risk-weighted assets, stood at 20 percent for local banks. That, he said, was well above the minimum global standard of 8 percent, meaning the city's institutions are well equipped to meet challenges. Chloe Fong, HKIBC. Overseas, at least 35 people were killed and dozens others injured after Russian missiles hit a military base in western Ukraine. Fighting also continued on the outskirts of capital Kyiv, while relentless shelling has hampered evacuation efforts in other cities. Projectiles have been raining down all over Ukraine as Russia opens new battlefront in its military offensive. The western city of Lviv is no longer safe as missiles pounded the Yavorov military base, where international peacekeeping troops have set up camp nearby. The attack on the facility also tested the tolerance of European nations, as it was just 10 kilometers from the border with Poland, a NATO member. The Kremlin even warned that delivery convoys carrying western weapons would be considered legitimate targets. Russian forces also tightened the squeeze on the besieged southern port of Mariupol, leaving residents there in deep desperation. <laughs> Once a mother of two, this woman broke down in tears as she recalled how she lost her child to a Russian mortar attack. Now stranded in the hospital with her other child, she said she's run out of places to flee. The ultimate prize for Moscow remains the capital, Kyiv, where intense explosions sent air sirens constantly roaring. Ukrainian troops scared up for an all-out assault. We will fight from every basement. They will lose tanks every street, every block, every crossroads. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky claimed that over 12,000 Russian troops were killed in the conflict, compared to 1,300 Ukrainian soldiers. That toll will only grow as efforts by France and Germany to ask Russian leader Vladimir Putin for a ceasefire made little headway. The deteriorating situation has displaced more than 2.5 million civilians, with over 1.6 million pouring into Poland. Moldova, one of Europe's poorest countries, is struggling to cope with the influx of refugees. But some Ukrainians seeking refuge in Hungary decided to make their way home. I'm sure Putin won't greet me with flowers, the 60-year-old woman said, while waiting for a train bound for the western border town of Yushhorod. But I can't leave my life shaking in fear. On to the weather now. Tomorrow will be mainly fine, but it will be foggy near coastal areas. Temperatures range between 21 and 28 degrees, turning humid and foggy on Tuesday and becoming cloudy with some rain later in the week. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Sunday. Join us again at 4 Updates at 10. I'm Sarah Wong. Thanks for watching. Good night.